I know this is going to be a. Uh, I was just reading about it. Somebody, somebody else put something up on it. Not only you sent me something. Vanessa Corazon, did you get hers? I did. So the I, haven't read it. I haven't read it yet. She, has, she had um, new moons are potent portals where the moon is at its closest to the sun. Um, and there's uh, so much so that its light is blocked from us. Have you ever been so close to something? It could be right in front of you, but you can't see it. Mm -hmm. mm. Not only is the moon dark, so are we. We are left with primitive responses and instincts and our intuition and sometimes our fears as navigation. So. Okay. So I'm going to add to that a little bit, if I may. Yeah. So with some of the stuff I'm reading, I'm not so much sure that it's fears of navigation, but I think mm -hmm. we're still in a flux and a flow. And Gemini really opens the opportunity to, Gemini's the twin, right? So there's more than one face. There's yeah. more than one vision. There's more than one way of being, right? But Yeah, it actually says here, this is kind of cool. It says the, this new moon is occurring at 12 degrees Gemini. So we're being gifted and entering this new moon period slightly seasoned with the Gemini energy, offering us its wisdom and far-reaching perspective. So I think it's a perspective versus a fear. But it says Gemini is all about focusing on the big picture, about stepping back and getting a full view of what's in front of us, including that which we don't like, so mm -hmm. that we can make the best decisions for ourselves. Right. Like all air moons, Gemini, so this is an air moon, so that chart that you've created, we could check that out, and that's what that would be, can be challenging signs as it gives a sense of too many options, options to choose from. So I like what she's saying because she applies this to business. So Vanessa Corzon talks about, like, do I create my opt-in page or do I write my sales page? Do I update my social media? Do I schedule my content? <laughs> right. And the pain that comes with Gemini is that we believe that all of the options in front of us are equal. Um, they so all have value. But what we forget is that not all of them will benefit us right now. Not all of them are doable right now. And not all of them will lead us down the path we actually want to go and need at this time. So in truth, the Gemini is nudging us toward that that there is actually only a couple of tangible choices. We have to be willing to see through our own smoke and mirrors in order to determine what they are. And right now, so, so we can take all of that information and apply it. Let's look at it on a personal level, since you were talking about it on a business level. Yeah. Is this is a month of trying. So mm -hmm. I had sent you, oh, I did, I did uh, Marco with you last night um, mm -hmm. on the whole, like, oh, I still haven't been able to find that reference. Um, the whole devil's area thing. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. what it is, is it's a place where you have created the vibration where you can walk in and easily create your genius, right? That, mm -hmm. That's what it's referring to. And it had a specific terminology and something, something devil or devil something, and I forget exactly what it is. But I think we're in if you take all that information you were talking about and apply it to more of a personal level, we're actually in an opportunity here to try things on. So like you were saying, we're looking at all of these things as being equal. Mm -hmm. um, not only your opt-in page and your, and your constant contact and your homepage and your videos and yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But um, if you look at it from a personal view, what do I, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? Do I want to be like this in the world or do I want to be like that? Right. It's, and, and we, we've created equal stature to all of them, but this yeah. is really our opportunity this month specifically is to try and to play in those energies and within the playing decide which one's the priority and which yeah. one. And when she says here, and, and I think it's a good point too, is that um, it also becomes a trap. She says where it stops us serving and instead adds to our overwhelm. So right. be, be mindful of what it is that you're 
intention is by using or making a new decision to initiate something maybe new you haven't tried before versus going in and maybe readjusting what you've been doing and finding a new outcome for it instead and saying, if it's not working like this, what can I do to alter that? Right. Because sometimes I think sometimes we, we often uh, think we need to break everything down to rebuild it. And sometimes I think that that actually is not m the most constructive use of energy. Sometimes it's a very subtle shift of just acknowledging the working parts and trying to see the part that's not working mm -hmm. and just replace a part versus a whole system. Exactly. Exactly. It's, and, it's just and again, too much effort. applicable to both general life and mm -hmm. business. You know, you and I have been talking a lot about relationships over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like just just replacing um, your your the intent, the intentional way you react within a relationship. Exact same thing. You don't need to replace the whole wheel, just yeah. one little cog. Um, yeah. You know, instead of jumping on something right immediately as it happens, come back a couple hours later with grounded intention and out of ego mm -hmm. right yeah absolutely um, so just replacing the one little cog and playing within that and knowing that within that play um you are right i don't want to use the word right because i'm really i'm really coming up against this and i'm just going to do a little sidebar if you don't mind i'm really coming up with against this and this whole um try um people have been raised in this oh try you know do or do not right um so oh i just lost my train of thought um you know so so do one thing and decide mm. if it works and the thing is is it's not right it's not wrong it's just yeah. a different way to be within a situation and one way is going to produce one set of results and another way is going to produce another set of results so in here i don't want to use the word try because i want you know <clears throat> I want people to really be empowered in the idea that you can you can make a decision you can implement that decision if it doesn't work the way you want, then you can implement another decision, another yeah. way. But don't, I think this comes down to a bigger conversation, which is most people don't even know how to make really good decisions for themselves. And so that's why there is this searching. Trying is searching, let's face yeah. it. Trying is searching because at some point you haven't decided and made a definitive choice about what it is that you choose to do or choose not to do so when you try you're really never committed right as far as i'm concerned um and when you look at things like what we were talking about how can you ever be truly committed if you're just trying if you aren't putting a hundred percent into something you know this is not i don't know how you can go through life pink spoon sampling ice cream expecting to find the big you know the best flavor out there you know what i mean like that's so many good ones <laughs> there's some good ones out there but you know you already know what you don't like yeah. you're never gonna i'm never gonna go eat rum raisin if you try to you could pick that and tiger tail forget it nothing no i'm not doing it don't even just don't even ask so those just go right off the slate so i don't i find it really funny when people are indecisive that's when i find them trying and that what it what it tells me is that they're not actually being quiet and listening to what it is that they want yeah okay because i was going to ask you are they really being decisive or 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 is their feeling their vibration their sense again just too big for them and they haven't chunked it down they haven't broken it out a little bit i just i find that people they for number one they haven't done their work they haven't done their research they haven't really and that can be external or internal to decide if it's something that's aligned with what they want listen every decision we make is based on our values 
based on our values. And if you don't know what your values are, it's so easy to end up, and especially my and my work, and you understand this too from the entrepreneurial side, is that it becomes a chase for the bright, shiny object syndrome. If you were operating outside of your values, you still have this belief then that something greater than or something better out there is going to give you the fulfillment that you're looking for. And the truth is, it doesn't matter if you're in business or personal, we're all walking around looking for love, we're looking to have our self-esteem boosted, and we're all looking for security. So. Well, and that, and that still goes back to, to that story, you know, and, and I think you were the one that told me, you know, the guru gets up in the morning and he still has to chop wood, make breakfast and do dishes, right? Yes. And then one day he chops wood, um, bakes bread, does a miraculous healing and still does dishes, right? It's, I think, I think so many of us are looking for, again, that, that big, that big idea, that big thing, you know, again, we haven't brought it back to the value level and we mm -hmm. think that it's supposed to be this big ah, moment. And it's not because you still have to chop wood and do dishes. Except for that. There is an ah moment. It's the moment you realize you're actually whole and complete as you are and you can stop searching externally. Exactly. That is the awe moment when you finally realize I can be comfortable in my own skin and all that other stuff can keep going by. And when you finally realize that what you've been searching for externally, when you realize you're the center, you're the one that's turning that, you're the one that's making the choices, you're the one spinning the universe around, all of a sudden you can go, oh, oh, yeah. I'm just fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Okay, yeah. now well, how am I going to make my choices? That's why I said, I think when you hear people trying, there's a search. So when you've got this Gemini moon where there's a lot of options, I think it's really asking us to stop and really reevaluate what is it that we want? What are our values? Our values change as we get older, for sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and from our experiences. And, you know, um, there's a lot of people out there pushing cool thinking everybody should be drinking and wanting the same outcome uh, called success or called wealth or called abundance and the oh you're cutting out a little bit Wendy if they are there you are you cut out a bit Oh, I was just saying that there's just, there's all this nonsense going on, on inter, especially on internet land out there that everybody has to have the same dream and journey and you're all going to get to the same mark at the same time if you do it the same way. Yeah. And there's no way, there's no way that's going to happen. And I keep using this example lately and it's really hard for people to get that each, each one of us has our own path individually, but as a collective, we all interact together. And it's kind of like the best example I can give is that if we look at a snowbank, we can see that it looks solid. But the truth is, if we put it under a microscope, that snowbank is milled of millions of millions of individual snowflakes. And no one of them is alike. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how we are collectively. And I think that when it comes down to making choices, we really do have to slow down and decide what what's really important to me what do i really want and why do i want that yeah so i mean that's what i've been working on because honestly there are people out there who don't necessarily want to be multi-millionaires most people you know, don't want that they're content with don't want that. yeah they're just content with you know and you know, then, I, heard, I heard a stat actually for business it said most people who are, are self-employed that go into business only 5% actually meet a million dollar mark. Only 5% will actually make that mark. Right. And so does that make them wrong for being in business? No, there's a lot of reasons why that happens because sometimes it's the structure of the business and the model that they're using. But there are I a lot of people. I was talking to a man the other day and he has an office here and he has an office in Peru, right? Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, he's throwing some ideas around because the office in Peru, he thinks from a North American standpoint that it should be doing better. 
compared to Peru Market? I don't know. Maybe it's doing everything that all the other businesses in Peru are doing. I don't have anything to compare it to. I don't know. But you know what he said to me? He said to me, you know, Carol, that company down there has put, has, has employed, you know, however many guys for however many years and helped those guys put five children through university. Good enough, he said. Good yeah. enough. Right? So just to your point that, you know, that, that was his measure and level of success. Yeah. wasn't necessarily like you say a million dollars in the bank account it was look what i <clears throat> helped build and look at the future generation that i had a hand in influencing for sure yeah yeah, yeah. and that was yeah. his that was his marker but you, you know, know it's because i got a call today from somebody who had to make a business decision and they have a, a brick and mortar business but that part of that business is a retail does not make them as much money as other aspects of what their work is doing. And they had to come to the conclusion that they were going to let go of the retail space. Mm -hmm. And this person was sitting kind of on the fence. And then I realized when we were talking, I just said to her, you know, um, they're going to obviously be people who are going to say, gosh, it looks so successful. But I said, at the end of the day, after what you've explained to me, it wasn't worth the stress of having it because mm -hmm. she realized if she looked at our numbers and everything that it was not as one of the options that she's had to finally let go. So perfect timing with the Gemini moon mm -hmm. is that it, it was taking more energy, which is what I think one of the topics we should really explore is the amount of energy, not time and money that it was actually taking to keep this thing afloat. And it wasn't producing and it was, it was, it, it was actually, creating issues and you know, health wise from the stress of trying to keep the doors open while other aspects of the work she's doing is actually chugging along doing really well and taking off. Now the physical space the retail space, she just can't get enough people to keep coming into. Mm -hmm. So the, the challenge was, what do I do? And what do you think if I gave that up? Well, I said, it doesn't change the dynamic of the work. Not really. It just makes her more focused. And I think uh, if we can all let go of needing to be liked and trying to people please, the decision that she makes, especially under a moon like this, uh, a new moon, is only going to enhance the experience for making that decision. Because now and she can be more focused. Perfect she opportunity. <laughs> the, month, the month of June is about the third eye, right? Mm -hmm. So it's your, it's your third eye, your intuition, your inner knowing. Mm -hmm. So again, the opportunity to really sink into the choices that you have in front of you, how they influence, how they make you feel, and 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 sensing into the energy, and mm -hmm. and really being able to to sink into all of that and and make a decision based on what feels right for you. <clears throat> yeah, because it's that it's that feeling right vibration that will increase in residence right mm -hmm. and and even even if you don't have a sense of exactly what it looks like when you seek that feel right vibration it automatically brings with it the material the material goods mm -hmm. right so in in your in the lady's sense that you were talking about um her brick and mortar did not enhance her feel right vibration. It no. did the exact opposite. It and those, and, and you know, I think moving forward, I think those are the signs that we really need to start looking at is what feels right. So, so in all of that, people, first of all, have to get a sense of their body. And I think, you know, yeah. I, I think a lot of people are getting into yoga. Um, yeah. I think it's excellent. Uh, I personally am not really a, I don't mind going to yoga once in a while, but it's not really my thing. Um, but I think it's excellent because it really brings people to actually feel all the sense of their bodies and be able to decide what feels good. Stop it. <laughs> I know. 
what feels Sorry, good. I, I like doesn't. this. Although you said this, you said this Gemini moon makes you sleepy, and I honestly don't feel like I can get enough rest right now. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's it's not super late yet in the day, but it's late enough. Or I'm just like, okay. Um, that's too funny. So sorry. Sorry if you're oh, watching. That's okay. Them. That's okay. Making and, you yawn. And when it comes to trying to trying to understand what that vibration is, if you don't have, you know, like a tangible thing that you can, you know, you have a business and you have four aspects of the business. You say, well, that aspect and that aspect make me feel really good. Those two aspects, mm, right? If you don't have that, this is where your imagination really starts to come into play. And you yeah. can really, going back to what I said earlier, really go into trying on some of those hats. And yeah, I agree. Get, get into it in the imagination. And, and you know, whether, whether your um, imagined scenario is true and accurate, I don't think really matters. I think yeah. your body responds to the idea of what you're imagining mm -hmm. is more important. So yeah. what I mean is if you, if you're imagining that you own a hat shop and you're trying to decide whether or not to bring in a certain style of ball cap um, in your imagination, and you, you're, you're trying to figure out, should I bring in a ball cap or should I bring in a knit hat or whatever? Yeah. I don't think it's that that matters. I think what matters is the feeling you have about owning the hat shop. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, so even though some of your details in your imagination might not be correct, it's mm -hmm. about the general overall idea. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and one of the things that was interesting about this Gemini moon, it's not just only that aspect of detail. It says by simply deciding, we unlock our own shackles. Mm -hmm. So releasing us from this in, this inability to make any movement through a decision. Well, going that, back into the try, right? Yeah, and and that even in the midst of choosing a potentially quote unquote wrong choice, we are in fact choosing, which is true freedom. The only freedom we actually have is the choice. Yeah. So with Gemini, we can often be weighed down by the belief that we will make a mistake, which is why we become nearly obsessed with having all the information before choosing. But if we're honest, what's holding you back is that you are deeply afraid of choosing the wrong path and not being able to turn around. So again, hence the try, the try, the try, the try. Well, and choosing the wrong path not being able to turn around and be ridiculed for it, yeah. right? Have your drama trauma dragged out. Have your yeah. family say, you know, what the hell were you thinking, right? Uh, you know, it, it's not just making a mistake and then trying to course correct. Yeah. It's many, many, many of us, I'm not going to say everybody, but it probably is everybody has that one person that will say, what the hell were you thinking? And yeah. you know, when you're trying to course correct and when you're trying to do these things, that is the last thing you need because what it does is it takes you right back into the drama. Instead of being able to compartmentalize it, put it on the shelf and move past it. You got people constantly bringing it back in your face and swishing your face in the mud pie. Right. Yeah. And how, how the hell does that make you move forward? And how does that help you become a better person? All it does yeah. is make you have to go and wash your face again. Yeah. And like I said, there comes a point where a lot of this, well, first of all, there's a couple things actually. <laughs> is that vibrationally, what you're, what you're asking is that people start taking a check in to make sure that vibration with the choices are matching where they're where they're wanting to be because we understand as you keep doing this work and you get deeper into the work that it is through our vibration and our conscious thought that is what's elevating the external stuff that's actually showing up in our field and that happens in business that happens personally and when you're doing this you're asking them to to start checking on a vibrational level 
in the imagination, which is the playground of the mind, mm -hmm. what is it we're wanting to create and staying in that energy of that? Mm -hmm. And again, if you are not used to holding that energetic space or it's, this is a new concept, having the idea of choice feels like, well, then what am I actually looking for, for it to fulfill? Right. And it's actually, for me, it's become the opposite where I used to be, a, I'd seek, try to find that fulfillment. But since I've really leaned in to myself and said, if I'm whole and complete and I am enough as I am, then whatever it is that my choices are, I'm actually bringing, calling in the stuff that I choose to desire to experience. And I think that's what you're saying here. And that is then once you start doing that, externally whatever goes on with other people is really none of your business because honestly they won't know what to say or do they really it's none of their business and and that, well, that there's always going to be somebody who has an opinion and as i'm growing up and and growing into this work that i'm realizing that your opinion of me is none of my business and i'm i'm That's really to live that and 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 you know i know we're recording this and if we decide to post it um you know know that you're going to be at a point where you don't understand what that means but also know that you will get to a point where you go oh i get it now and yeah. there's a the vibrational shift right there's a there's a pure example of what that shift is mm -hmm. and and when you when you talk about bringing in a vibration you don't have to have a very specific definition of it what you have to have is an idea of what that might feel like if it was the right thing and then wait for that right thing with that vibration to show up and that's where sitting down like me personally i need i need at least 20 minutes a day 20 minutes twice a day is ideal for me to just have no chatter no tv no phone just like as an example, sitting out on the deck first thing in the morning with my first cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Don't bug me. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. You know, just let me connect, right? Let me just shake out the cobwebs, you know, clean the shelves, right? Yeah, for sure. And let me just have that, that time where yeah. I can reconnect with that vibration that feels good to me. And that vibration will attract what is ideal for me. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as you know what it is you want to feel like, mm -hmm. the rest will come. And yeah. for some people it comes faster and some people it comes slower. Like I say, yeah. you still gotta chop the wood, right? <laughs> yeah. And it does it will make it is, it's one of the it is a thing where um again I still think there's this misconception with manifestation and saying things are, you know, going to manifest and come to you. I kind of really watch the language and know that I'm calling it in because whatever it is I'm thinking about, if you, you know, it, it, whatever the law of polarity is, whatever that is you're wanting to create, it already is in existence or you wouldn't have that desire as it is. So it's a real, you can start having some very interesting quantum conversations around how this really works yeah. and i th think that we have to be really mindful the most important thing we have out of all this conversation if anybody walks away going up you know some of this was over my head i do want them to understand you are in complete control of everything that you're experiencing through the thoughts and ideas that you have and you're creating that that is one of the most powerful things and it's a gift that people often forget that they even have let alone weren't even often told they have well, and, and just as a, as a practical opportunity to give a, a experience here, have you ever been in that situation where you go, oh my God, I can't handle this. I got to get out of this. Yeah. Right. That is um, probably a more negative impact version of exactly what you're talking about. You have that choice in the moment. You have stuff going on and you know, you and I know that that when those things are going on, it, it's words going back and forth. Yeah. And it's actually our reaction to those words that we're feeling that makes mm -hmm. us want to go. So it's not the words itself, it's what our vibrational reaction to those words yeah. are. Right. Yeah. So 
even in that moment, and yes, it is a negative example, but even in that moment, your body gets to the point where it recognizes it just can't be in that anymore. Mm -hmm. And, and I think even though it's a negative example, I think it's those types of things that happen. And you and I have experienced these things. You and I have talked at great length about some of these things that we've experienced. And it's the same thing. It's, it's kind of that point where you go, I either need to shit or get off the pot. I either need to make a choice, be okay in sitting in this crap that makes me feel crappy or I got to get out of here. Right. So, you know, so be grateful for these moments sometimes, even though they're hard to go through, that they make you realize that they make you realize what you don't want. I was just going to say, they absolutely make you decide if you aren't clear about what you want, then the, then life will show you the things that you don't want. Exactly. And then now you have a starting point. And yeah. that's a and that's a fair enough place because I, I would say the number one worst question that people always ask when it comes to coaching, well, what do you want? If you want business, what do you want? What do you want to create? And most people have such a hard time answering that question. It's too open-ended. Yeah. So we have to we have to start smaller or we have to start more specific around well, how does how do you want to feel about your day? How does this work support you? What does your lifestyle need to do to make it feel like it's fulfilling? You know, there's just so many different ways that we can play things out. So what it ends up doing, as in all of this, is that it comes back down to choices. What are the choices that we're wanting to make that will actually bring us the things that we want to experience? Mm -hmm. And I think this Gemini new moon is offering that opportunity to be clear about understanding what are the choices and making sure that the choices match the value system of the things that we want to experience so Mm -hmm. in having mentioned the gemini new moon it's also a strawberry moon right oh okay yeah which is which is um the start of the summer harvest season so in making these choices you know now you have the opportunity to harvest um what has gotten you to this point, mm-hmm. right? And we still have more time left in the harvest season. The harvest season actually goes right through to the end of October, right through to the end of the hunter moon, right? Cool. Um, so we're, we're right in the very beginning stages where mm-hmm. you you start to take responsibility and accountability for where you are now yeah. and looking back in your life, how you got there, right? Yeah. Reap the harvest of how you got where you are. Mm-hmm. And in implementing, I'm gonna use like a real farming metaphor here. <laughs> you know, we used to use those things, the sides, right, to cut the hay, and now we oh, use yeah. the combine, right? Yeah, those sickles, yes. In yes. forward thinking, in forward thinking and trying to up-level your thinking, to up-level your vibration, being accountable and responsible for your actions, and not trying, but either doing or, or not, let's call it what it is, do it yeah. or don't, right? If you forget to do it, then you, for, then you didn't, right? Yeah. It, it is what it is. And just really start to use that ability to start to harvest what you know, harvest what you know you don't know, mm-hmm. and take those steps, yeah. right? What don't I know? What do I have to do to figure this out? And at the end of it, if it's not for me, at least I know it's not for me. Yeah. Well, I was at a business, yeah, I was at a business um, workshop on Friday. And I think this acronym is totally perfect for what we're talking about. And the, and, and the word is actually focus. Like okay. You're talking about focus, right? Yeah. It's actually, they used it as an acronym, which was follow one course until successful. So when you're talking about being specific and being directive, I think this whole choice here is about finding the thing that's, that seems to kind of spark you a little bit in your, in your um, energy, start feeling how it feels, what it's doing for you. And then once you find that, 
move forward with it. Take it to the end and see where it's taking you. I think that's one of the things that slows most people down is, again, there, there's a lack of focus and there's a lack of trust. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just add there, again, going back to, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us who are the type A personalities who want results, 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 outcome, outcome, outcome. Yeah. We, you know, and you're raising a family and you're doing this and you're doing that and, and we get busy, right? <laughs> just remember that you still have to chop the wood <laughs> and do the dishes, right? Yeah. So when yeah. you're setting yourself up for your desired outcome, whatever that is, personal business, whatever it is, make sure you leave room in that cap, in that growth to chop the wood and do the dishes. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I think, I think one of the things like you and I've been exploring lately is actually looking at totally flipping our calendars to more of a cycle calendar mm. so that we are actually taking advantage of the energies throughout the month with the moons and this actually is not surprising right now why you and I are tired and it's a new moon. I mean, this week as a new moon, most of the time, if I was to track my calendar, like we've been doing all, all year so far, this week has always been a very quiet down week for me anyhow. Uh -huh. And I've had the first week of the month when the new moon's coming through. And if this is a new concept and, and people haven't heard about this, it is becoming one of these things that you and I've been playing with is watching the days and watching where they are on the calendar. And it is shocking to see that you can literally track these energy spikes and peaks. Mm -hmm. And knowing that this week is actually a quieter, uh, more restful when we need to kind of pull back into our hermit caves and, and really do some rest, do our, our thinking, setting ourselves up for the month this only makes perfect sense to be a little more discerning in the kind of choices that we're making. And then as the, the energy starts to start waning and waxing back up because the waning it's waning first and then it goes to full moon and then wax. Is that, yeah. 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 I had to make sure. Um, it's like, that's like convex and concave for me. Oh, like, hang I, on. Are you right? You know, I, I don't know what I'm asking I you. <laughs> I think we're both wrong. Is it? Waxing and then waning, waning, I don't. Wa waxing is first. Yeah. Okay, so waxing. Waxing yeah. and waning. Convex, concave, you know, potato, potatoes. Yeah. In and out, <laughs> up and down, yeah. <laughs> but there's an actual energetic shift that's happening too. And I find it really interesting because you and I have been doing new moons and full moons cycles here talking about this. And I think if we, with as much as we're talking about making choices, it also has to be in alignment with where we're at. You know, you can sit down and say you're going to make these choices, but energetically right now, if I had to go out and start um, doing some of my big, like if I had to do some big talks and stuff this week, I would really have to be dragging myself to do it. And I don't want to do that. My energy would be quite low. And I, I had that last week. Was it started, I could feel the energy starting to dip last week heading into this week and I yeah. did have a talk last week and I really had to um, really amp up my own energy, like try to find that place deeper inside of me instead of going off the natural flow, like around the full moon when my energy is really high and excitable. Well, and, so. and so that, you know, for anybody listening, that's exactly to our point. So now moving forward, you know, if you're looking to book a talk or an event or whatever, you actually look at the chart and go, okay, yeah. I know that on fire days that are in the, in the eighth phase of the cycle, which means, you know, the last few days right before the new moon, if you know that those days you are really on, those are the days that you plan it for. And yeah. then the writing that you have to do for that show or, or whatever that event is, um, you know, you figure out what days you're introspective and thoughtful and conclusive. And, and those are the days you set up to do the writing for that. I think we need to do a, a whole video on all of this um, and really get a, a way for people to come join us and play in this new understanding. Yeah. Because it's been so fascinating to watch this. And again, you know, and then you layer that. So not only do you have the moon cycles 
then you've got these now astrological cycles like yeah. with the Gemini or we just went through a Scorpio full moon which oh my and gosh that, about that one. oh I don't know if you, that was that one I I'm not kidding I I kept telling I kept sending you videos telling you I feel like the troll under the bridge <laughs> the spiky energy. It was terrible. It was just like, this is not how I usually feel. Yeah. But everything was annoying me. Everything was bugging me yeah. for, that, for that period. Or, just or you had that tail come out from somebody and you got hit, didn't you? Yeah, the bars. Whack. Whack. And the, hit hard, the, right? Yeah, and the teeth on the dog. dog. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> literally. The teeth on the dog. Like it's, it's getting better. It's yeah. getting better. That's good. Yeah. You know, yeah. when it comes when it comes to the kind of work that that I do, you know, I I love to layer the energies, right? So just like you were talking about, so we've got the new moon which has its own energy, right? And then we have the um astrological sign of this new moon which happens to be Gemini. Even though we are not in the astrological part of the calendar that is Gemini, but we're just kind of out of it now. Yeah. Um, and that's for astrologers to figure out. I am not an astrologer. I do oh, not no, know. I don't understand how they all get that. And it I had just, something to do with where things are in the sky. I don't get it. <laughs> I'm just told it's a Gemini moon and I go with that, right? Yeah. But, um, but again, and then layer on top of that, um, the Native American traditions of the harvest moons and the blood moons and the and black moons. I just well, you, black moon. I so know, I read that. A black, a black moon is the second new moon in a month. Who knew that that was a thing, right? So yeah. you start to layer all of these energies. And then, of course, there's chakra energies of each month as well, right? Yeah. And then you have the more personal energies, like the month of June is the month of self-worth right? So when you start to layer all these things, they're very specific things that we are supposed to address and that we're supposed to go through in this month. And what I find really interesting with you and I, Wendy, and, and maybe it's because we actually communicate outside of these realms. Like I think you and I talk what once every two days, once every three days, yeah, whether least. it be on the phone or in a polo or, or something yeah. like that. But it seems to me like we're very fortunate that the experiences we have in a month actually support the understanding of the experiences coming up for the next month. Yeah. Like even though the experiences are in that month's energies, it helps us understand the experience coming up for the next month. So I, I think that that's a really interesting thing because this has been about three or four months now that we've kind yeah, of been, yeah, yeah, I mean, kind of been diving weird. into this whole mm -hmm. moon thing and videotaping them either for public viewing or just for our own information. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that we're, I think that's so cool. I think I it think is pretty cool too. I think I it's think cool. It's, I, and I think, I, it, I think it, it plays a lot to um, our level in which we want to play at. Mm -hmm. Right? That, yeah. that we're very mindful. We're very thoughtful. Um, luckily, you and I have each other to communicate with and banter ideas back and forth and yeah. hold each other accountable to the spiritual laws and the laws of energy. And, um, you know, I'm very grateful to you for that. That's for sure. But yeah. yeah, I think, I think we have a really cool thing happening here. Well, and I think what's been really cool is we've been actually, uh, using ourselves and this experience as a testing ground to really finesse and understand this. And one of the really neat things I think that, uh, we haven't really touched on is that, these practices like you you kind of said well the indigenous practices of this and understanding these phases this is old knowledge this is ancient 
ways of being and practice that we've lost and we've shut out and said, oh no, we're going to use this linear man-made model over here because it works for comrade. Let's be honest. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the, our, our construct for time was actually built for economic purposes. When can we all meet in the morning? When should we all close down the tradex? When should we be filing for business papers? Like it's a real construct. And what it did is it separated us from the cycles of our natural innate being on this planet. And I think one of the things when we talk about these structures within the moon and this new cycling system, and we can see that we can apply it to things like business, this is really where that divine feminine is stepping forward. This is wow. this, this blend of the blend of bringing back this ancient knowledge of understanding that we are part of this greater cycle and it is still applicable today. And, and even I, more so. And I think part the other part of that that whole loss of this cycle that um, I know I talk about. And people kind of look at me, you know, um, I think the whole idea of anybody that followed these types of rituals, these types of understanding, these types of natural laws were labeled the witches. Absolutely. And I, you know, and, and I've told you this before, and I'm very open and honest about it, that I do have rememberings of being burned at the stake. And I wasn't a witch. I was a, uh, today I, you would call me a wild crafter, you know, yeah. I harvested herbs and roots and flowers and stuff to create medicines to help people. I wasn't a witch, you know. I, well, I and I don't think a lot of women, I think there's a lot of women that are coming forward in the healing arts that are having an awakening. And as a business coach who works with people in this transformational and the healing arts and crafts and these communications and things like that this is one of the things that i see them struggle with and it really it's it's called the witch wound yeah. and that is the fear of visibility for knowing and putting out your craft and i know this is a bit of a sidestep from the new moon cycle but I, this is where this information is coming forward and we're having to finally say we're going to own it this time and you can't threaten us because we want to live through this and we're, we're actually operating under these, under these principles, which outstand any test of time. They are, they are the cycles of, the, the, of Mother Nature. Well, they are things we function under. And I don't think this has anything, and, and this is more of a, of a social commentary to how our, our patriarchal system has taken over and said, no, we're going to function like this. And all of you, quote unquote, witches, who followed that doctrine are we need to get rid of you and so there's a, I mean depending if you believe in, in past lives or not and I do I do believe that there's a lot of people men and women who are coming through to this awareness going this is the challenge of being visible and because of the vulnerability it's it's also past life brought forward so uh -huh. Uh -huh. it's an interesting it's an interesting that's a whole other story too and and just <laughs> Since we're on a bit of a sidebar here, too, I just wanted to bring up the Schumer Residence as well. Um, Schumer Residence is operating right now at like 20 times their, I don't want to say original because I don't know if that's accurate, 20 times the amount of resonance that they have historically been operating at. So I, I think that that just really supports us in our desire and willingness to step up and heal that mm -hmm. witch wound, mm -hmm. you know, to know that, that the earth itself is supporting us in that. I think that that's so cool. And people need to know that this, the time is now. Yeah. It yeah, is there is, done. this is. I've, and I've said this, and I know I'm not the only one who has said this, is that if you were born of this time, at this point, you know, there, there is an agreement to help transition this planet into this new state of being. And it's really funny, and, I, and I'll tell you, I don't even know if I've ever told you this story, but when I was younger, my, my mom was very much into the metaphysical arts and 
the healing arts and into what I call the woo-woo stuff ever since I was a little girl. And she used to take me to seances and readings and things like that. And I've met people who used to talk about this transitional period because we really didn't know what specifically, what was that going to look like after the Mayan calendar. And I remember being younger and being afraid, but there was a piece of me that knew, and I don't even know, understand why I knew, but I knew that when I got to this age, there was a reason I came to help. And I basically feel like myself, along with a lot of people that are my clients, we've been waiting. We've yeah. been, our whole life has been setting us up. The things that we've been learning, the experiences, I can't even tell you how many women I know that have literally walked through the fire the last five or six years yeah. and have come out the other side stronger, more determined, not with like, uh, a power stance of oh, I'm going to take you on, but a real deep compassion. Not, and they're learning to be compassionate with themselves because they're incredibly compassionate for people um, that have that same situation that they now want to help. And it's fascinating to me because again, all of us are being called forward. Yeah. All of us are having these memories. All of us are being asked to heal I, these old wounds. I want to thank you for bringing that up because in in that story, in that opening. The other part of it that that maybe you haven't thought about or you didn't mention is that a, a lot of us, like you say, you know, we, we're feeling this pull to to help, to help, help, right? Yeah, just to help serve. Well, well, you know, when whenever there is any task that requires a lot of helpers, sometimes there's the people in the front leading the charge. You know, I, I think of the the soldier, right? Charge! And then there's the guy in the back that's holding the horses, right? Yep. So, you know, just because you're feeling this call to help doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be that guy at the front, right? Yep. You can be the guy in the back holding the horses. Yep. And I want, I think that that's a very important point because if you're feeling the need to step in, you're feeling the need to help. And, and, you know, you have friends like us who are kind of type A. <laughs> well, what are you doing next? Well, what are you doing next? You don't have to do anything next. You can just go back there and hold the horses, hold the energy for hold those. Of energy. Us really exactly. Stop. Exactly. Right? And not only that, all of it's necessary. Absolutely. It's all just as important. It's all necessary. It's all necessary. And I think there's, the, again, that misnomer of there's going to be fireworks and, and bombs going off and it's going to be this big thing. And the truth is we're now owning that energetic stance. You, the energy actually comes from within. Like I said, when you really understand, and I mean, this is what I love about the messaging that I'm seeing happening that's changing is that we're whole and complete. We're whole and complete. We can drop a lot of this stuff. We can finish working through the stories and understand how they've really hijacked our lives. But the truth is when you start saying I'm whole and complete, you realize it isn't, it's not going to be something that's out there. It's not going to be the million dollars. It's not going to be the huge accolades. It's going to be that next conversation you have with that person in the lineup mm -hmm. while you're waiting to pay for groceries. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be as simple as um, helping somebody. Um, a, a case example, I went to get my dog's haircut last week. And I get to the, the store, the shop, the woman who's his groomer that owns the place is panicking because her assistant hadn't come yet. And she was supposed to go pick her up, but she got lost and needed to get back to the shop because she knew she had people coming like myself to drop off their dogs. So it left her there all by herself for the day because her friend, the assistant couldn't get there. She didn't have a ride. And honestly, I was out running errands. I didn't have a time schedule to go off of. And I offered to go get her because she lived there in our community. And the woman sat there and just about bawled. <laughs> she, was, she was definitely holding it back. And she says, that's the nicest thing anybody's done. And I said, well, the truth is, I can see you need help. What's it to me to take 20 minutes or an hour? You know, I think it took me by the time I got up there, got her, came back around a whole hour out of my day. 
but do you know the power, the impact? She said, I wish more women could help each other like you just helped me. And I said, well, more women are starting to. Yeah. More well, people and starting to do, and it's, for me, it's not about this big, gigantic rock splash. It's literally the ripple out effect. The ripple out effect. I, I remember one time I was in a bank and uh, there was this elderly lady there. Elderly. She was, yeah. she was, did she have a, I can't remember if she had a walker or not. You know what? She had a walker. Mm. And leaving the bank, I had just finished at the bank machine and she had kind of was in front of me and, you know, I'm kind of behind her, kind of, can I get around her, you know, zoom, zoom, zoom. Well, her walker hooked on the carpet that was on the floor in the, in the foyer, the vestibule of the bank, and she fell down. She hit her knee quite hard, yeah. right? And, you know, I could have just said, oh, stupid old woman, and I could have left. But the healer in me, right, the energy worker in me stopped you know, are you okay? Like she was like flat out laying on the ground. We got her up, you know, kind of up on her elbow. And then her walker had like a little seat in it. So we got her into her walker and I put my hands on both of her knees and I just talked to her for a minute and I ran Reiki on her. Mm -hmm. Cause I thought the last thing this woman needs is a big swollen inflamed knee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So here you know and i don't know the results of well i do know the results of what i did the results of what i did made things better than if i didn't do what i did right mm -hmm. so and all it took it took me five six minutes to help her up put her in her chair um you know some of the bank employees came out that know her right talk to her um you know it, and and through that physical contact i was able to run some reiki on her and possibly make a difference mm -hmm. you know just and and i'll never know the results although there's plenty of opportunities that i have had where yeah. i've said or done things for people and four years later they come back they find me yeah. um some of them quite happen substantially and say do you remember me you did that yeah well, here it is four years later let me tell you the results yeah right well, and exactly and i mean i have the re and it's exactly kind of that thing i have been a business owner i've, I've owned my own businesses my whole pretty much my whole working life and there have been days in my business where i've had employees not show up mm -hmm. or i had one issue after another and I really just thought I was going to have to just go into the other room and start crying because it just you just get to that overwhelm point and I could see that in this person and I think there's again this is still these choices that we get to make and I think from now uh, the choices that I make it's really about living in in alignment with the principles of more life for all me doing something like that only is going to make things better for her but not only that, now you've created, in, in, in your action, you have created a vibration. Yeah. Of well, and, I, and, I, and I mean, I've been in her shoes. I told her that. I said, I have had times in my business where, honestly, you re it's only like only other people who've owned businesses understand those moments where you're just like, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to lose my mind, <laughs> yeah. you know? I've had to haul my kids to work with me and try to figure out how to manage my days. And, you know, I've had employees. And so I understand the dynamic of that. And again, I think it's just part of the choices that we start making that uh, we start seeing the human cost of caring for each other in that kind of sense. And like I said, her comment was, you seriously are an earth angel, Wendy. And honestly, I wish more women would see that when another woman needs help that they would just help. And again, I think you and I maybe ought to do some videos around this whole sister, not only the witch wound, but the, the sisterhood wound, because 
um, I was I just said to her, well, I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to help, but I have the opportunity to do it, and I'm making that choice. Well, I think, and I think, is it? I have to check, but I think October is the month that we really address that whole sister. Question. I think. I well, think so. I think yes. October, th this month, it's about just claiming your own self-worth. You know, mm -hmm. I deserve to rest because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Right. I mm -hmm. deserve to eat good food because it makes me better able to fill in your own blanks. Yeah. Right. I deserve compassion because sometimes I am compassionate. Mm -hmm. right um so this month is really about claiming your self-worth yeah you well, know i want better in my <laughs> life i want better in my life so i am not going to tolerate you speaking to me like that yeah and then your yeah. choice is to accept an apology mm -hmm. or leave yeah yeah and I think that's what that I think sometimes we think choices are about, again, the external acceptance, but I think this is also accepting uh, choices of raising our standards around the quality of how we engage with other people and in within our life and our environment. I know well, for and, you and, and I, I, think, you and I, I think, both have been up leveling that lately, so it's not surprising I, to me. When you talk about up leveling our standards, I think that that. Again, I talk about the Schumann resonance, right? The heart, the heartbeat resonance of the earth. That's the Schumann resonance. Um, I think knowing that that's increasing, you know, it's definitely ch challenging you to up level your experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think for you and I specifically, we're fairly close in age. I think age is really challenging us to should I get off the pot? <laughs> Pretty much. Sh yep, sorry much. excuse my french <laughs> so um yeah so i think we've covered a lot of ground here are you ready for a card yes please yeah i had i had uh this deck talk to me today wanted to oh, come play nice. so this is energy oracle cards by sandra and taylor nice because I asked my decks which one wanted to come out. So this one said, me, 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 me. We didn't even do an opening tonight. I know. <laughs> we just started. We just started. We just and then started. We, started yawning. I, <laughs> we had set our intention for an hour earlier. And yeah. we had already had our candles lit. And while I was waiting for you, I had already anointed myself. Um, so I was ready. <laughs> so if we post this, we're going to have to tell people, light your candles first, <laughs> anoint yourself, because anoint yourself. we Be already understand. did that part pre-video. <laughs> so in yeah. here, I, I while I'm shuffling here, I pulled this one thing off the internet, and I thought it was so cool. And I printed it, and it's a little bit long, but I'm going to read it to you anyways. It says own it oh nice which i think is very apropos for what we're talking about own the fact that you are different own that you are a deeper feeler and thinker own that you're tuned into a different frequency own the fact that you sense things others don't own the fact that you want to talk about angels energy miracles and spirituality own that you are done having meaningless conversations own that you're done holding yourself back own that you crave freedom to feel the now. It's okay if your family don't get you. I think you should say doesn't, but it's okay if your family doesn't get you. It's okay if your friends don't join you. It's okay if the world judges you. It's okay that you want to dance barefoot upon the earth and endlessly gaze at the stars. It's okay that you cry over sunsets and chase moonbeams. It's wonderful, in fact. It's beautiful. You have come a long way to be who you are. So own it. Own all of it. Love all of you. The world needs you to be exactly as you are. You hold the balance in this crazy world. 
That's great. Who, where did you find that? Um, it, some meme. Uh, Erica Stanton is the name on the bottom. Erica Stanton. Nice. That's great. So it just gives you permission to be you. You are the snowflake in the snowbank. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. We are shuffling. Give it three knocks. Clear it. Just show us a card that represents the energy that we were talking about here today and that really reinforces what we need to know. Okay, this card's talking to me. The thinking man. Number oh, interesting. Six. The thinking man. So let's see what the thinking man has to say. Male of wisdom or understanding. This card shows a man before an archway gazing at a crystal in his hand. <laughs> he is thoughtful and reflective man representing the potential presence of a teacher in your life now or about to arrive soon. This person may be there to educate you in the finer details of your chosen direction or maybe there to assist you in some specific spiritual, mental, or emotional pursuit. This card is telling you to pay attention, or this could lead to great strides in personal or professional growth. This man may also be a love interest coming your way, or perhaps just a new male friend. But be on the lookout for this guide in the physical world and be open to his information. Learn what you can, a new discipline, technique, course of study, or healing practice could change your life forever. So what I, what I see in this is it talks about exactly what we're talking about. Learn what you can, a new discipline, a new technique, a new course of study. That's what we've been talking about is a new way of doing things, a, a way to up-level. And when it talks about a man, we can refer to a male energy, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a man. It yeah. can be a male energy. So, well, and I know you and I both carry a lot of male and masculine energy. Yeah. And so even, even that sense, I mean, I'm, my thing is learning how to turn that off. So I'm not so much in that masculine and get into the softer feminine. Yeah. Yeah, so, you're doing so a really good job on that, by the way. Thank you. Been working on it. Yeah, yeah. Been, been making very conscious choices of turning that off and turning and actually learning. Another one is learning to be in both of those energies and really feel your body and feel your whole shift. Yeah. And when you're in your masculine, and then switch it back to your feminine. Yeah. Um, that's that is a, that is a practice definite practice yeah because especially yeah. for a lot of us women when we weren't taught how to be women we've been modeling men's behavior we've been, we've been talking yeah we've been taught how to be little men <laughs> yeah, i know um, i know what, what's the name of that one book that you and i read about the, the women's code oh the uh, queen's code the queen's code that's yeah. been an excellent book for um fictional it's a fictional representation of how you can really apply. Yeah, feminine. you can embody you can embody some of the feminine principles in communication in relationship with men. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really great book that way. I'm really actually enjoying the book um, Feminine Genius. That's another one by another really great woman's coach, um, Ilana Silver. Uh, Le yeah, Liana Silver, and I, it's just—it's just been such an eye opener of how the conditioning is that we've encountered to keep us at this other place, and can le completely deny the the characteristics of the feminine. Right. And so, learning how to bring those uh, characteristics back and and intentionally embody them to balance that out is not only great for just us in our endocrine system and our female bodies, 
but it's also really good for us in how we operate in the world. So I'm really trying to apply that by listening more so to what my body needs as a woman, watching the cycles of the moons now and living in that cycling. Um, you know, I trusting, think trusting my intuition and then backing with the logic and know how to do it. Yeah. Instead of trying to force myself to figure something out when even intuitively I might be going, this doesn't feel right. Like really trusting myself. So yeah. Sorry, and there's a video. Making, yeah. making, <laughs> just making some notes here because I find you always so brilliant. <laughs> You're pretty well, darn that's the way it is when I talk to you. I'm like, wait, I gotta get a notepad. <laughs> I know. And I've been reconnecting with the earth. I've been gardening and planting and walking out barefoot in the grass just to be present with nature and you know. Well, and, and I I would I'm much rather be out in my garden than in the house. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Cleaning. Yeah, for sure. No, I want to yeah. I want to get out there. I want to get in the dirt. I want to sculpt. I want to mold. I want to you I know. I was just super happy cuz my baby watermelons and baby strawberries seedlings popped up and I got to transplant them into the bigger garden today. So. Oh, nice. Yay. Yeah. So I've got a whole, I got a whole slew of things coming in. So. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Do you want to take a minute and close this circle? Yes. I think we should. How do you want to close? Should we just, are you, you're gonna, you'll have to blow out the candle. I didn't even I, light a candle because I, I was like oh, taking hot. the light of your light. They are hot. Light. I'm gonna bring the tray over because they're hot. <laughs> I don't even think you've ever seen this tray. Let me see if I can change the angle here. You see this tray? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So there's my moon, right? And I have all yeah. seven chakras. And I have lapis and yeah, I have all sorts of stones on here. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So I will, uh, what color do you want? Um, let's go with the blue. Okay. I'm not going to pick it up because it's hot, but I'll blow it out for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to leave this circle with a word, and it's going to be the word pleasure, because I just always enjoy my time with you. So, pleasure. Pleasure. And I'm going to go with the indigo, which is the third eye. And I felt vibration and my body is just vibrating right now so and i and i always vibrate after i talk to you because you're just so smart so knowledgeable and so keen to share and so insightful and intuitive and i'm just so grateful to have a friend like you that i can share these conversations with so in in honoring the vibration I'm feeling in my body, I choose indigo vibration. Yay. 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 I can see the smoke. <laughs> I know. It's going right up in my feet. Put these back. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's my little altar. So okay. Um yeah, so everybody and anybody that's listening, I hope you have a fantastic new moon. And um, and if you haven't... And get watched, some rest. <laughs> get huh? some rest. If you're get watching... This is your sleep, to sleep people. <laughs> if you have any questions, post them in the feed. And uh, Wendy and I will track those for the next couple of days because you might not know this but the energy of the new moon is actually a couple of days before and a couple of days after so um while we're playing in this energy let's just play exactly 
Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, sister. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Oh.